Hello, everyone. Welcome to the More Than a Mother podcast. I am your host, LaJuan Moses, and I am here with my wonderful guest, Devin Moody Graham. We are going to dive right into her interview. But before we do that, if this is your first time listening at More Than a Mother podcast, we uplift, educate, and empower moms on their business and motherhood ventures. And we believe you can pursue your dreams and be a great mom at the same time. So welcome, everyone, to our first live episode. So before we jump into your interview, Devin, if you could just take a moment and introduce yourself to the audience and tell everyone a little bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, et cetera. Yes. So my name again is Devin Moody Graham. I hail from the amazing city of East St. Louis, Illinois, which is like right in the middle of the map. Either you know about it or you don't know about it, or maybe you have heard bad things about it, but it's so much greatness here. I love it. Um, my background is in marketing and um, business. I have recently dabbled and I'm now going into international business, which is super exciting because it's new. Um, I am a wife, a mother of beautiful blended families. I've raised six children, given birth to four, ages three to 26. So it's never a dull moment in my house or life. And um, I love to travel. My favorite color is green. Um, I love to dance. I love to sing. I love to do all arts and things with my children. And um, oh my goodness, what else? I am the founder, I'm a serial entrepreneur, being the founder of CEO Mom Empire, which is a strategic business firm in which we specialize in helping businesses that want to connect to minority-owned businesses or organizations that want to connect to minority-owned businesses, bring resources and trainings for expansion. Um, I also work with a lot of women and mom-owned businesses because I'm a woman after your own heart, believing that women, especially moms, should be able to pursue their dreams and be a mother their wife at the same time so that and so that their children can see that and live limitless i also have a tech startup called bubble mate which is a mobile laundry service and being a mother of multiple children you know i wash a lot of laundry so preferably soon this will be my ticket to never do a laundry and i'm just super excited to talk with you because i do a lot but i'm gonna leave it there <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do a lot. You have a lot of spare time, as I can tell. So, <laughs> so, yes, I am so glad to have you here with me today. So before we get into everything that you are doing, if you could just kind of briefly walk us through, like, what was your transformation story, that kind of aha moments in your life that put you on the path that you're on today? Wow. Wow. There's so many things, but if I can think about it, um, Actually, it's so crazy because I do have a big family, but originally because I come from a large family, I'm the youngest of 10 siblings. I never thought that I would have like more than two kids. I was like, look, between all my nieces and nephews that are my age, my siblings are 10 to 18, 10 to 20 years older than I am. Big family, right? So I never thought that I would have a big family. I always had these dreams of moving away and doing, you know, so many things. And I would say when I became a mother, which was my senior year in college, those plans changed, but they shifted because I never stopped dreaming big. I just knew I had to do it with the baby on my hip and I went on to grad school and just kind of figured that, hey, now that I'm a mom, I have to go harder to show my, my son is 17 now. I said, I have to go harder to show him that no matter what challenges or what changes to the plans that you make uh, come your way, you can still reach and achieve whatever you set out or even more. So probably becoming a mom at that time when I thought that I would be moving to New York and I ended up coming back towards the St. Louis area and going to grad school, I was like, okay, well, my dreams haven't changed. Something has to give. Um, and from then on, to be honest, it was like, oh, what am I going to do? You know, like I love small business. I am the product of small business owners. My dad's been a cobbler over 60 years. My mom, a cosmetologist, as well as my grandmother. And so I said, well, I don't have those skills to work with my hands. You give me all these ideas, guy. I was kind of jealous. I'm like, everybody else can, you know, do things. And I do a little hair, but that's not my thing, not anything I wanted to do long term. And so it was like, okay, you give me all these ideas to help people. Okay, is that what I'm supposed to do? So I ended up getting my master's degree and then going um, 
figuring out that I wanted to be a consultant and a small business consultant and really with a focus on black owned businesses, because even though I grew up um, with my dad's business and writing checks and going to the supply store, like at a very young age, there were still so many things that for businesses that want to scale, you know, and businesses that uh, can be generational that I saw that weren't there. Like none of my brothers are, are shoe repairmen. None of them learn the trade. I do the business like paperwork marketing for my dad, but nobody, you know, else learned it. And so I'm actually saddened by that because, you know, to want this to go on. So I said, what can I do to help other others to build legacy what can i do and so i start connecting with state agencies i started branding myself my first company was creatively strategic solutions it was really all about what is this basic paperwork that we're missing you know why can't we get approved for these loans of course i know that there's a long long history of racism around that but still we still need to have our paperwork in order so that we can say hey this was your checklist i had all 10 documents my credit is good what's the problem but you can't really say that if you don't have any paperwork you don't have bookkeeping records you know and you're not ready but if i can get people there then i know that i can make changes and help people build legacy that's so important to me so that's my story of my life switching getting look i didn't even say adding getting married adding three more children um, biologically and um, two children, you know, that I've helped raise by marriage and two additional, so huge family, but my dreams never changed about helping people build legacy. And that is so important, just thinking about how your dreams never change and how the obstacles come up in your life. I became a mom when I was 18. So when I graduated mm -hmm. high school, I became a mm -hmm. mom. So listen to you talk about well, being a college senior, becoming a mom and just going to grad school or how that changed mm -hmm. your plans. It's just amazing how you never lose sight of the vision, no matter what comes your way. Right. And yes, you had these great plans, building legacy and all of that. But really, when you were going through this, because a lot of people don't talk about the journey through yeah. it. We talk about the beginning and we talk about the end, but that journey through it, as you were going through yeah. navigating this, like what type of things were you feeling? What thoughts were going through your mind? How are you able to kind of overcome that part of it you know what the thing that was most scary about it for me <clears throat> was really telling my parents <laughs> um both of my parents were teen parents and um, before they you know came together and look made me <laughs> so they both had children from previous marriages they were teen parents and they worked really hard um, to, I was in every activity and everything. And I actually felt like I let them down. Now I was 20 years old, but I really felt, I just felt that way. And when I finally told my, my parents, I was, I really wanted them to say more. My mom just asked, she said, so you're not going to get married, are you? Because her thing was, she was, she had, she had to get married in the sixties. It was the sixties and she was pregnant. And so hey she had to marry the father that was it it didn't matter if she was miserable none of that matter you are pregnant now you need to get married same thing with my dad you know and she was just her thing was just don't get married because you're pregnant and i was like no ma'am i don't plan on marrying because i'm pregnant and she's like okay she said i go tell your daddy <laughs> and so when i talked to my dad you know what he told me it, it's so crazy because he's so cool and chill and laid back as he sat in his recliner he just simply said oh i already knew you were pregnant you kept asking me to bring home uh food every day when i came home from work and you were in the bed i guess he say lady i have raised all these children i know when people are pregnant i know when my kids were pregnant i knew you were pregnant and then he also said well you know it's going to be a little harder but i know you can do it and that was it when once they said that i kid you not i literally felt like two boulders were like off my shoulders because that i didn't care what anybody else thought it was them because they truly have worked hard to provide you know for their families and i'm the youngest and i just felt that extra pressure and once they were like hey okay let's talk about it we'll work through it and everything worked out like we started planning and what's crazy I got the best grades my senior year in college because I could hardly sleep. I literally had the best GPA when I was pregnant. I said, look at God. Wow. <laughs> my senior year, um, I had, I was blessed to go away to college with uh, three of my very best friends since elementary school. 
they took me to the hospital to have my baby. They made the calls. They planned my shower. I had like a shower at home. I literally was supported a lot, even though I was away from, I was away at school. So that helped. Now, did I have those moments where I cried? Absolutely. Because I still felt like, what am I going to do now with this baby? Like, okay, I'm having a baby. I'm about to be somebody's mama. Like, how is that working? You know, what is going on? Um, but I truly felt supported. I truly felt supported by my family and my friends. Um, I also am a member of a Christian sorority. I, I was covered by them. And I can feel people praying for me because at a time where I should have been more stressed, it was my senior year. I had switched my major my junior year. So I had 18 credit hours, my fall and spring semester. And I had to, and since I changed colleges, I had to take some independent study classes the summer, like right after I graduated to confirm my degree. So my college schedule was crazy I wasn't working um because of course I couldn't because by the time spring came I was wobbling um my son was born that March and I walked across the stage that May and to see him in the stands with his dad and my parents that was like I did that you know I know it's a lot more after that but I did that part and so I told him I told my son that his name should be on my degree because being pregnant with him my senior year got i earned the highest gpa i had ever earned because he didn't like sleeping in the dark so i would be up and i would start studying and uh, but moving forward like after that process it was hard um from grad school to back and forth relationships with a 20 something year old tumultuous relationship that ended we got our son out of it but of course it ended after um I think when my son was closer to or right before he turned two um so that was that was challenging because even though i didn't plan on marrying him you know right then i i come from a two-parent home and i did want to see if we could make it it couldn't and it was okay because you know we have a better relationship now we just we were like this <laughs> right all and the you time to find you kind of find out that that is okay because not everything is meant to last even if we have the best intentions yeah but i feel like you brought you brought up a lot of good things about support and the importance yeah. of family support friend mm -hmm. support that goes a long way in every obstacle that we encounter everything that comes up against us really having that support helps mm -hmm. us to really advance so what did you kind of learn about yourself as you were going on this journey after you became a mom, that relationship fell apart. You're like, okay, I come from, I want to build legacy, serial entrepreneurs, we're doing all this. Mm -hmm. What kind of things did you learn about yourself as you're on this journey and you're building and grinding and growing? You know what? Um, to be transparent, well, I'm always transparent, but really, especially speaking to another mother, coming, when I being a single mother and then transitioning to later being married i i really brought a lot of still of my single mama mentality to uh, my marriage and i'll be the first one i talk about that with other people other mothers that's a real thing that's a real thing um because even though my mom my parents have been married almost 40 something years she came from uh, being you know in in relationships and marriage is not working out and doing that thing on her own with her three boys at the time and so I was my I'm my mom's um, only biological daughter and so she really instilled in me no matter what make sure you can take care of yourself make sure you and now going into like almost 11 years married my oldest is 17 um, going into this year I'll be 39 it's only since it's only been since last year that I have been on a journey to become more feminine, become more like I have been take charge. I'm really trying to smooth it out. I'm still a boss in business, but I'm really as a woman, I'm really learning. I don't want to take care of it all all the time. I literally don't. Yes, I need to run my business, but then delegate. I don't want to do those things. And that's what I've really learned along this journey of being a boss and starting these businesses and building legacy. Yes, that's fine. But Devin wants to be soft sometimes. Devin doesn't want to have to plan everything. Devin doesn't want to be the strong friend all the time. 
Devin doesn't like those things. She has, I just got accustomed to them. And so layer by layer, I'm shedding those off and it's feeling lighter and it's feeling good. So that's, that's what I've been learning is that I want, I'm, as I walk in this legacy building, you don't, I don't tell women, it's not about this super strong woman, especially for black women, the super strong black woman, I'm over it. I'm over it. And of course, you see my three-year-old, she doesn't care. She's like, girl. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, and she's like. But I like, how you, I like how you brought up this thing, because I made a post about this on social media not too long ago on my TikTok about how the strong person doesn't want to be strong all the time. And I think that mm -hmm. is more of the language that we need to start getting out there, because mm -hmm. yes, we can be strong. Yes, we are strong. Yes, we're leaders bosses, all that kind of stuff, but mm -hmm. nobody wants to be that all the time. And more and more yeah. people are saying it is okay to step back. The strong person doesn't want to be strong all the time. No. And as you said, we learn these kind of things to overcome things. When we get in certain situations, we develop these characteristics and we're used to it. Mm -hmm. But then, as you said, when you get married and all that, it's kind of like that independent, dependent spirit that you have. Mm -hmm. to have. We all come <laughs> in with that attitude because as women, we're the strong woman X, Y, and Z. But we have to learn that quote unquote balance because we don't have to be that all the time. We have spouses right. for a reason. And I like how you point out that that's the path that you're on now because more and more women and especially black women need to hear that mm -hmm. you don't have to be strong all the time. It's not mm -hmm. a sign of weakness. It's okay. And like you said, you feel mm -hmm. that load being lifted. You feel lighter. You feel the boulder coming off because like, I don't have to carry this all <laughs> by myself. I don't have to carry all the time. And it is okay. Mm -hmm. And more and more of that needs to be said because everyone's always like, stay strong. You got to stay strong. It's like, no, what if I don't want to stay strong? And that's the thing. I don't want to stay strong right now. I don't have to. Right. I want to rest. I want to take my cape off. I I don't even want the cape. Like, I know I need it for some things, but I don't want to wear the cape all day. And so that's where I am. And literally, as I come more into that space, I'm actually able to, I've been making more money since I say no to things and I don't try to take everything on. I have, I get more rest. And I recently, this as of this morning, so I'm starting this wake up at 4.30 thing. <laughs> Go girl. We're gonna see. So I did just buy the four hour work week just to see, but I because I'm working on something for women and moms that's really on having a shorter work day and then kind of helping them map out time for house things because we don't need to work all day. Like me getting up five o'clock, me going to bed at one a.m. and I'm still like, oh, I still got more to do tomorrow. No, that's not life. And I have gotten to the point, every day isn't like that, only when I have deadlines, but I want to be where I'm helping women create applicable solutions because I'm working it in my real life with, you know, they say, well, hey, if she can do that with, you know, five kids a week, you know, because with, if, if she can do that and I have two and I have two businesses or I have two activities and each of them, except for the three-year-old has after school activities, you know? So it's like, if she can do that, I can do, I can too. I deserve more time for myself. So that's the whole goal is to plan so that you can have more time in yourself. People are taken care of, but you're taking care of yourself first by planning that out. So yeah. Yes, I am. I am all about self care, and you run right yeah. in my lane with that. Say no, because that's <laughs> what I tell people all the time. Look, the first thing you gotta do, you gotta start saying no. It is okay mm -hmm. to say no, and people don't realize when we're saying no to others, then we open the door to say yes to ourselves. And I asked right. people last week, I was like, okay, so why are you okay with saying no to yourself, and why are you okay with always saying yes to other people? But then you are quick to say no to yourself. Like, oh, I don't want to say no to this person, but I'm going to tell myself no all the time. Like, we yeah. don't think about those things uh -huh. that when we're constantly accepting what other people want us to do, we are constantly doing what they want us to do. We tell yep. ourselves no all the time. And now it's like, okay, I need to start telling myself yes. And I think that's how we need to start to flip it. Like, okay, start telling yourself yes. Yes, I need to rest. Yes, I have goals. So I can't do everything you want me to do. And that's okay. And that's okay. Yes. Well, that is wonderful. So let's transition and talk about your business. So, so can you tell us how CEO Mom Empire began and how it has evolved over the years? Yes. So uh, CEO Mom Empire is actually my second consulting firm. I saw a shift in what I was doing um, and with me really transitioning to how can I help people be more efficient and of uh, growing their businesses when I work with individuals. How can I help build legacy for my family? 
um, was me starting a group called the CEO Mom Project. And a lot of people, some people don't even know my name. They may call me CEO Mom. Hey, CEO Mom. And that's fine because I start branding under that. And so I said, hey, well, if I'm building legacy and helping people to build empire, I'm going to create a new company. This is a new time. And I did that like right before the pandemic. So um, CEO Mom Empire was born out of that. I got more specific with the services I was offering really focusing on helping people to build the appropriate relationships, to outline their resources and what things of value they have, as well as what they need to uh, provide for others in order to make revenue. So I really shifted my model down to doing those things. And um, that's how I was able to, when I, when I got that clarity, that's when I was able to look at new markets. And so I have been traveling just for, fun to Paris since 2017 um, with a girlfriend of mine and I've always loved Paris love just took French in high school I was like oh I just love it love it and so I just decided that I wanted to um, host a conference in Paris in 2018 and so I was pregnant with my uh, fourth child and I had a little bit more time because I didn't work as much during her pregnancy and so during her pregnancy during my pregnancy with her and so I, um, that's the one now that runs the boss. So I guess it was her pregnancy. She, <laughs> she, she runs the house. And so I uh, actually contacted some, um, I was researching some mothers in Paris and ended up connecting with some women. I tell you, I love black women because we just do, we, could, we connect. This person didn't know me from Eve and was like, yeah, you know, how can I help? When I connected with her, she connected me with an amazing black expat community in Paris. And I proceeded to um, plan my first conference, which was in 2019. And I saw some gaps that could be filled. I saw that not as many people were um, doing, what was it? Um, well, working with international businesses, especially around black businesses, and I actually did my first business showcase um, during that time. And then I did a business showcase this last year once the world started to open back up and just decided that, hey, I'm going to add more connection between different parts of the African diaspora to Paris. Because in essence, <laughs> black people, we have built most of the country, most of the world, I'm sorry and between food culture those things are still very prevalent in um in paris and other european countries and so i picked paris to go forth and i've been working with entrepreneurs to um with service-based businesses in paris to expand and do things in the u.s and then i'm working on some product-based businesses to expand into paris and so just by connecting with the right state and federal agencies i because when i do things i'm going to do it big I said, well, we're going to do this thing right and connect people to resources to actually grow and build legacy. So that's what's going on with CEO Mom Empire. <laughs> that is wonderful. And just in everything that you're talking about, you're talking about like just the importance of relationships and mm -hmm. connecting and meeting the right people. So I know that you have some tips that you can give us entrepreneurs. Like yes. how can we build those kind of more organic relationships in business yes. and in entrepreneurship? Yes. So it's so funny because I'm actually speaking on this on Saturday. I uh, created a, a presentation called Intentional DMs. So in this day and age, especially the last two years, people have really utilized social media more than ever to do everything from speaking engagements, from virtual conferences and things like that. So when you think about reaching out to somebody cold and not feeling like you know, them not feeling like you're spamming them or you're weird or creepy. It's really about you finding what is that value add that I have. So for me, I knew that the person I reached out to, I knew that she was a black mom in business. I knew what she did because I looked on her websites. I learned about her. So I looked at what she had to offer and what I could possibly offer um, to her to say so it wasn't I wasn't just reaching out and saying hey can you give me something I would say hey this is me this is what I do I see you're doing that I would love to connect and see how that we can work together I see you do this and this may work great together everyone has something of value and as a business owner before we even approach people for like next steps we need to outline that and it's okay like to write it down I don't know why people don't want to write it down they feel like they got it on the top of their heads but write those things down of value that you have to offer to different different types of people you want to connect with, potential customers. And so when you know what you have to offer and you think about the value that you can offer others, it oozes. Like I ooze a value. 
because I always want to speak words and speak life into other people. So people never have a problem with connecting with me because they know that I'm always going to add to the situation. So the first thing is to outline the value that you offer to people. And the second is to decide what is, what's your ask. And then that third would be, what is the goal of your ass? So I didn't just go in connecting just to say, hey, girl, I like your Instagram. You know, it was, hi, this is what I do. I've been doing this for a while. I've been looking to build community um, there. And I see that you do this. I was, and I'm planning a conference this time. Is there any way that you can assist with any of these things? Because there's so many things that I didn't know. Um, culture wise so the french of course and they go on holiday often like some schools close every six weeks for two weeks because they they're very family oriented they you know they're going to take their breaks their vacations with their holidays it's not it's not like here um lunches are longer days do not start at 8 a.m like a cafe may be open for breakfast but nobody's out meeting at eight o'clock you know you're going to have a late morning meeting or a lunch meeting and then dinners are long so like even when you go to restaurants you are um not bothered they don't say hey are you done yet you want you want the bill no they're gonna leave you alone for like an hour and then may look at you make eye contact to see if you need a refill on something you know unless you call them over so things are really relaxed so knowing those cultural things is something that i needed to know and so it was great to say hey i don't know this i have this you know how can i be of value to you this would be great to connect. And then she spoke at my conference. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was really about finding those things that you have a value, um, knowing what your ask is and the goal of your ask um, to know that, you know, it's something that's going to work out because you always want to offer value to people. So those are things that I would say about those connections. It's not just, um, hey, what can you do for me? Right. And I like that. I like how you said you ooze of value. Now that was a power statement right there. <laughs> Just coming with the value and really leading with the value. As you said, a lot of people kind of have that. Everyone has that kind of what's in it for me mentality. Mm -hmm. It's like a lot of people that reach out in DMs, they lose sight of the value and then also right. the mutual benefit that this could be. And it's always like tends to be one sided. So I like how right. you have this conference come or this what do you know presentation on intentional mm -hmm. dms i think that'll be helpful to a lot of people and i know you mentioned unapologetic in paris you said you did that yes. in 2018 but i hear that you're doing it again in 2022 you want to tell us about that oh my gosh yes so i'm super excited because i definitely miss paris i did get a chance to go back this last year when i um helped when they honored josephine baker but this will be my first time uh bringing a group back and it's going to be two groups. So all the media isn't even out about this, but I have been blessed to be a part of bringing an HBCU, a hair show is the HBCU here in St. Louis. And I'll be bringing a group for their first entrepreneurship certificate. I'll be bringing a group of students. And then I also have my women's group. So I'll be bringing two groups of people to explore the economy, business, culture, and food. We'll have a business showcase as well. Um, lots of fun, lots of walking. Cause it's a lot of walking <laughs> we will uh do the touristy things as well but um since i make connections we we'll definitely do a lot of things that are not very touristy to be you know to be in the mix i'm super excited because this is um a part of my long-term goals to continue to bring groups both adult um mom groups women groups universities and then next year i'm transitioning to mommy and me groups so that um i want more children to experience that so my children will be coming um this time because my six year is like mommy you're always going without us <laughs> and that was never the goal i just ended up going back for work for work and i was like no you're absolutely right so you will be going and because we need our children to see the world because this world is so huge it's so huge and i want them to feel like they can do and go anywhere they please so that is yeah wonderful. that yeah. I absolutely love that. And I love the international aspect of it. Because as you said, the world is so much more. And a lot of people don't even get out of their own states, let alone mm -hmm. getting out of the United States. So I love how you are on this intentional aspect of being international and in everything that you do. 
and how so many people, it's so much to learn out here. And that just really just brings me joy just to hear how you are so internationally focused and bringing people along and branching out in all these areas. That is just magnificent. So aside from motherhood, what would you say has been your most rewarding life experience so far? I would say, you know what, when I really got to experience um, things that I've dreamed of as a child, I'm really on this childlike faith kick because I want people to think back to those dreams they had before we were afraid, before we were adults, before everybody told us, you know, all the no's, right? So I'm big on those things. And I used to spin a globe. I, I said I was going to get that globe for my parents. So the globe is like probably 35 years old. I don't know how old this globe is because it has like the Soviet Union. So I'm saying that to say it has like the Soviet Union and all the older countries that don't even exist anymore, right? So as a kid, I used to spin the globe. And then I would put my finger there and I would say, I want to go there, whether I knew how to pronounce it or not. And so when I think back to those times, this is something that I, that's been in me since I was a little kid, single digits. It was to explore the world because I saw this glow, but I didn't think that I couldn't get there. And so I'm, once I started to realize that how at home I felt when I got to Europe, how at home I felt when I got to Paris, and I really knew that this was something, I was on the right track and I wasn't just visiting or it wasn't a fad when I went to, um, so Josephine Baker is from St. Louis and she was, the, she's the first uh, black woman, first entertainer, and first um, foreign born person to be honored at the Pantheon, which is the highest honor in France. And so I got to plan um, an event with the Black Paris community after the dedication service. And that was like, that's probably my most proud moment because being from, my dad actually grew up in the neighborhood where it was, 30 years later, because he was born in the 40s, but my dad actually grew up in a neighborhood that she lived in, in St. Louis, um, which is no longer there. And me being from the area, me knowing that she was, uh, that she w walked in the same areas, and I've been, she was a trailblazer, and I know that I'm blazing a trail for many people to come. And so me being able to meet her family and friends and partake in this once in a lifetime celebration where I was just someone who DM somebody about planning a conference two years prior. And then I get put into this group of people that are is well connected. You know what I'm saying? And that really changed my life. And it let me know that I was on the right path because I plan on having a Parisian flat by the time I'm 45. So speaking it, speaking that into existence, but I just, I really do love um, how I've been able to go back to those childlike dreams of traveling the world and then taking others with me. So I say that is probably one of my, outside of, of course, being a mother, that would be one of my most um, proud moments because, oh, and I cried when I left. I forgot to mention that. That's when I knew that was like, a second home because I really make relationships. I talk to those people often, you know, and I actually have a friend who was from where I'm from that I went to elementary school and he, he lives in Paris with his wife now. And so when, when I left, I felt like I was leaving family and I have never visited a place outside of going to visit my actual family and felt sad when I was leaving. So I knew I was in the right place, know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And then I'm like, I'll be back soon. You know, so that that's definitely something um, that was life changing for me. Yeah, that sounds very rewarding. So thank you for um, sharing that with us. And yes, just looking in the comments, yes, we recognize that everyone has different stories and we are mm -hmm. just sharing things that work from our perspective and how things that work for us. We recognize mm -hmm. there are different backgrounds. So everything that is said in this interview yeah. during this podcast may not work for everyone, but we just do the yeah. best we can from our own angles well i thank yeah. you so much for sharing that with us do you have if you want to share anything with our audience anything that you are promoting at this time let us know how we can stay in contact with you please do so yes so of course you can follow me here on instagram at devin moody graham i am also my website is devin moody um i actually became in march a twice published author so that was super exciting I thank you. I actually I published my own journal called uh, Manifesting Through Procrastination, um, a workbook and life journal. So that is on Amazon. The link is in my bio. 
as well as I was a, able to be a part of a compilation called Over, Overcoming, um, Living Our Best Life in Spite Of. It was a compilation with 33 Black women, like with amazing stories. That was a very rewarding and pulling. It really pulled some things out of me to write down the things that I did. So um, you can also find that link in my bio as well. So, oh my that goodness, that's so crazy. Look, so Crystal, oh, my, so I don't know if she joined on, but Crystal Petit is actually who I reached out to in Paris. And we're now cousins. We're cousins. We're sister oh, wow. cousins now. <laughs> yes. And she, I just saw that she had commented on, on something. I'm so grateful for her um, and trusting me, knowing that I wasn't a weirdo <laughs> and knowing that I actually wanted to connect. And I'm glad for that intentional DM so that I could connect with her and really um, reach in help other people that is wonderful